They call it the last great Coliseum. Welcome everybody here as we continue on our season, the first season of the Ansley Ray Duracell Cup Series, getting ready to run race number six. And it's our first short track of the season, the world's fastest half mile Bristol Motor Speedway. Getting ready for 63 laps of action and we are indeed running the 2019 rules package here today. So that's definitely going to be an interesting factor, plus the fact they have laid down that sticky substance, which I cannot remember what it is called, uh, down the inside of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. We'll see if that ends up bringing that bottom groove into play in today's race, or will these drivers still migrate to the top side and may using the high side be the place to make passes. Coming off an exciting race last week at Phoenix International Raceway where we saw Jessica Shelton pick up her first win of the season on fuel strategy. Are we in for an exciting race here today? We'll have to wait and see. So far, five races, five different winners, which means that our playoff grid is starting to get a little bit congested with all of these different winners. So far, we've got Lopez, Turner, Shelton, Carter Friesen, and Jose Mills. Who will join them? Well, Zach Rogers hopes he will. He'll be starting on the pole position here today at a track where track position really is a key factor. He will start alongside of Trey Wright, the lone man out of Blue Oval Automotive that is yet to go to victory lane. And you've got uh, Wyatt Quayle and Matt Haas. They're going to make up the second row. One thing that we notice about this particular kind of track, whether it be Bristol, whether it be Martinsville, whether it be Dover, is... Usually, the leaders, they're able to get out to a pretty extensive lead, and then they catch up to the tail end of the field, and traffic comes into play of drivers on the lead lap or lap traffic. We'll have to see if that's going to be the case here today. 63 laps seems like a long race, but it might not be that long of a race since it's only a half mile in length. Let's go down trackside and get the command. Drivers, start your engines! Now, so far this season... The Blue Oval has gotten three victories. The Chevrolet Bowtie has had two victories. Dodge and Toyota, they're still looking for their first wins of the season. Zach Rogers starting on the pole might be able to give the Dodge Challenger team their first win on the year. But we're going to have to wait and see if that's going to be the case. Your point stands coming to this race. Currently, Jordan Lopez, the points leader over Jesse Turner, 20 points back, 29 points back. It's Jessica Shelton, pole sitter Zach Rogers, currently fourth in points. William Brock's fifth. Charles Samper is up to sixth. Mitchell Collins in seventh. Michael Norman eighth. Johnny Gardner ninth. And Matthew Rodriguez currently completes top ten. Getting ready to go racing here for the Food City 500. We're green flag at Bristol. Let's roll. Outside line, even with that grip down there, outside line kicks in and Trey Wright's going to go to the point. Wyatt Quayle might be able to get the inside line going as he tries to clear Zach Rogers for second, and he succeeds in doing so. Matt Haas now will get to the inside. And the caution is out. First caution of the day coming out here on lap number two. Can't say I'm really surprised. I think we'll get into a long green flag run once these drivers restart in single file formation rather than in double file. Because if you start in double file, you get really anxious to go three wide. Oh, we got cars in trouble just up ahead there. That's Jay Jefferson and Dylan Young right ahead of the leaders. That was a close call. I think Wyatt Quayle may have made a little bit of contact with Dylan Young. Not much, though. So he might be all right. Dylan Young's actually, I think, on the tail end of the lead lap. He's got to get around that 28. Oh, well, he didn't do it before the start finish line. He might get trapped a lap down now. And Dylan scored in 39th, which means I think we've got a driver. Oh, that's Jay Jefferson back there, who's also a lap down now in 40th. And we need third on back to catch up. They might have wrecked back here with... Trent and Matt Haas and all of them. Oh my goodness, what is going on there? Matt Haas getting turned off the nose of Kyle Matthews and he gets hooked again. He's got to turn back up the track right in front of drivers. Well, that was rather chaotic. Well, I was hoping when we put Bristol on the schedule we weren't going to have a calamity race and right now it's looking like that's the case that we're uh, in for. Hopefully, we are going to... Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Ryan, what are you doing? Well, hopefully things will get settled out here and we can actually get into a long green flag run once the officials finally figure out where everybody's supposed to be. Let's go back and see what brought out the caution. 
I think it starts with Matthew Rodriguez, but I'm not 100% certain. This is coming out of turn number four. We're going to see what culminates heading down into the entrance of turn number one, which is where we saw the skid marks. Rodriguez is on the inside line. Jack Mitchell's way up top. Does Mitchell get the wall? Oh, yep, I think that's what happened. He got the wall. Charles Sanford had a run. He's going to hook Jack Mitchell. Well, he actually moves down trying to avoid Jack Mitchell. And then Matthew Rodriguez, I think, moved up a little. And then he gets hooked around in the right rear quarter panel. And that spins the 57 around. Seth Cole's going to spin Mitchell Collins around. Everybody just trying to check up. Ryan Butcher's going to get hooked around off the nose of Johnny Gardner. And everybody was just slowed up at that point, waiting for everybody else to get turned back around. So that's what brought out the caution. Not really any damage sustained by any driver, really. Saw a lot of drivers with some rear-end damage uh, afterwards, where we had, I guess, that stack up under yellow. But hopefully everything's been settled out, and we're going to be able to get back to green flag racing. These drivers did test here, and it was actually a really good testing session. But I guess when you take... 40 drivers and put them all together within a few seconds of each other. This is what you're going to expect, at least in the early stages of the race. Let's see if maybe with a single file restart, if these drivers are going to do a little bit better. Well, we haven't gotten the one to green signal yet, but obviously with all the stack up that was going on, uh, we've got drivers that have retired out of the race. We've got drivers that are damaged and off the pace that had to come to pit road. And we've got drivers that are trapped a lap down. Chris Dollerton, boy, I think he's just hoping this season ends already. I mean, I think this might very well be his sixth DNF of the season in as many races. He's going to finish 38th. J uh, make that uh, Mitchell Collins. He's going to finish 39th. And Johnny Gardner, who looked like he was going to win the race last week at Phoenix. He ended up running out of fuel in the closing stages. He's going to finish 40th. I know Charles Sanford, Keith Batson, they're hoodless at the rear of the field in 33rd and 34th got lap traffic down the inside line Dylan Young and Jay Jefferson as well as Adam Garcia so it will not be a single file restart since we do have the lap cars down there Trey Wright got the lead from Zach Rogers on the initial drop of the green flag and a restart out in front Wyatt Quayle in second Zach Rogers third Matt Haas Trent Dunham gonna be fourth and fifth then it's Kyle Matthews Julius Anderson Carson Gum Jesse Turner and Vince Almriego your top 10 as we're going back green on lap 8 of 63 Will they be able to settle out and get around single fire, or at least not go three wide? So that way we can get some green flag laps in. I think our question was just answered there. Is there three wide back there between Trent Dunham and Kyle Matthews? Matt Haas there as well as Zach Rogers way up on the top side. Keep it together, at least for now. I like the way this looks off this corner, though. Zach Rogers brushes the wall. And Dunham gives him room. Julius Anderson doing the same. Well, so far, so good. Zach Rogers is trying to get back down to the bottom as he's still stuck up top side three wide. He might be able to tuck down in front of Carson Gunn. He's further up front. Kyle Matthews trying to work his way through traffic. Trying to get by Dylan Young, who's a lap down. And we have a lead battle between Wyatt Quayle and Trey Wright. Wyatt Quayle trying to get the inside line going. Not gonna be able to do it this time. He keeps it to the inside of Trey Wright though. I think if I remember correctly, the substance is called PB1, but I'm not 100% certain. Trey Wright though, going to hold on to the top spot. Fords one and two. Kyle Matthews, he did get around Dylan Young, so he might be able to close in on this battle for the lead, which again is side by side. Wyatt Quayle really good on the bottom in on the entry, but Trey Wright gets the better run off of him. Remember for Trey Wright, he is the only driver out of Blue Oval Automotive so far that doesn't have a win. Jose Mills had a win at Manassas. Jordan Lopez followed it up the week after with a win at Las Vegas. So trying to complete the sweep for the drivers there in that green day number 28. Bear in mind too that they might have to pit before this race is over. This is not a very easy pit road to get onto. Wyatt Quayle jumping up there to the high side. I think he thought about maybe making a move up top going into turn one, which would have been smart. And look at this. Closing in, Kyle Matthews. Director Racing Enterprises got their first win of the season last week with Jessica Shelton. Matthews, who 
Right now is the driver out of that team that is struggling. Comes into this race currently situated 23rd in points to his first top 10 of the season. Now he's up here in third. Jay Jefferson, Dylan Young, Adam Garcia, they're still ahead of fourth place, which is Trent Dunham. This is the battle for fourth between Dunham, Matt Haas, Julie Sanderson, Ryan Brommer, Jordan Lopez back there, as well as Jesse Turner. And the caution is out. Caution's out for the second time here today. At least we got a bit of a green flag run in. And we got some drivers slowing up in front of the leaders here. And these three, Trey Wright, Wyatt Quayle, and Kyle Matthews are probably the last drivers that wanted to see that yellow flag come out. They had a pretty sizable gap back to fourth place, Trent Dunham. Well, there's so many drivers that have damage from stack-ups that took place on the last caution and whatnot. I'm not exactly 100% certain who brought out this yellow flag, so I'm going to take a moment, go back, try and find out. And we'll be right back with your replay for our second caution of the day here at Bristol. And this one's going to involve Matthew Rodriguez for the second time here today. Goes a little wide there into turn one. Cuts it down and just runs into Seth Cole's right rear quarter panel. It's going to send both of them up the track. Cole saves it. Matt Rudd goes into a slide and then watches everybody tries to avoid. You see Dylan Poteet there moving low to avoid and comes down in front of Matt McIntyre and Ryan Butcher. And they go up and into the wall. Ryan Acosta going to get a piece of it as he sideswipes James Shelley. There's last week's winner, Jessica Shelton, sliding through. Keith Batson gets a piece of it as he kind of helps turn the 71 around. So Matthew Rodriguez, and I say this in air quotes, spinning, causes the follow-up wreck with Poteet, Matt McIntyre, and others. And that was enough to bring out the caution for the second time here today at Bristol. Well, after that incident, another driver has gone to the garage area. Matt McIntyre will finish in 37th here today. Still have Jay Jefferson, Dylan Young, and Adam Garcia trapped a lap down. 33 cars on the lead lap of 36 still running. Trey Wright still the leader. Wyatt Quayle in second. Let's see Wyatt Quayle sustains some right side damage now. Don't know where that came from, so that could affect him on this restart. Kyle Matthews in third. Trent Dunham fourth. Matt Haas in fifth. Then it's Julius Anderson, Ryan Brommer, Jordan Lopez, Jesse Turner, and Benny Watson has now popped up into the top 10 as the green flag is back in the air here at Bristol. Trey Wright makes quick work of Jay Jefferson there from the high side. He'll try to pull away from Wyatt Quayle and Kyle Matthews, and he's not going to be very successful. And the caution is out again. Flag waves for the third time today, and we haven't even reached the halfway point. It looks like this one may have involved the 18 of Cole Baker. But at least this time, we're not having drivers all stacked up that the leaders are going to run into. So, we're going to be able to very quickly go back and take a look at a replay this time, and not have to worry about following up if anybody gets wrecked up here at the front by drivers that are slow and trying to get back up to speed to catch up to the field. Really surprised nobody has hit pit road yet. So maybe with all these cautions, they're being able to save fuel. We may not see pit road come into play in today's race. But for now, let's go back and see what happened to Cole Baker. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to get run over. He's got some damage there on both the front and rear of his Royal Crown Cola Toyota Camry. Watch the 98. Our winner from Manassas, Jose Mills, gets a good run here on the, on the drop of the green flag. Moves low on Charles Sanford, who I think was trying to get out of the way. Cole Baker, I don't even think saw him coming. He's going to go to the inside of Levi McIntyre, and Jose Mills just dive bombs the corner three wide. At this point, Cole Baker's fighting the wheel, trying to save it, trying to save it, and you see finally there it just snaps around on him, and he slides up the track right in front of Charles Sanford. That car never really went around. So I'm a little surprised that with him not making contact with anybody else, too, that they actually threw the yellow, unless Dylan Poteet spins out here. No, he doesn't. So they did throw the caution, even though Baker saved it. A little surprised they decided to throw the yellow there. But it was NSRA official's choice, and it puts us under caution once again. It sets us up for another restart. 
right now, I think that the battle for the lead could potentially be between Trey Wright and Kyle Matthews. I would have had Wyatt Quayle in that conversation, but he has both front and right side damage. I'm not certain if that's affecting him or not. But I think that these three, at least, could put on a pretty good show in battling for the lead if we didn't have the lap traffic on the inside line on every restart. Unfortunately, that is the case. Unless we end up having a caution come out and get a restart with less than 10 to go, that will be how it will remain uh, for the entirety of this race. After that incident, I don't think anybody's out of the race. Nope. Everyone continued on. And none of the leaders hit pit road, so that says to me that I think they're going to be good to go on fuel. I think they've, with these three cautions, they've been able to save enough. Trey Wright only has one top 10 this season. That top 10 was in the top five. As stated, he's the last of the Blue Oval Automotive cars to find victory lane. If Wyatt Quayle wins, he'd be the first Joanna Atwood Motorsports car to win this season. If Kyle Matthews win, he would be back-to-back -back wins for Retro Racing Enterprise. Green flag back in the air on lap 29. Wright moves down to the bottom immediately. Wyatt Quayle had a little bit of difficulty getting around Jay Jefferson. Kyle Matthews had no choice but to wait. Now we'll see what Matthews can do with Wyatt Quayle here because he ran down the top two on that last green flag run. So he's got a very fast race car, obviously. The Young Motorsports cars are boxing in fourth place on back again. Dylan Young and Adam Garcia side by side. Ryan Brommer. Making his way by Trent Dunham on that inside. That is for fourth. Whoa! Dylan Young almost contact there with Garcia. They nearly wrecked. That is, I think, a battle for position between the 12 and 2. As Brommer's going to take them three wide. I like the way this looks back here. Uh, we're going to move up front because Kyle Matthews making a move on Wyatt Quayle for second. Inside line going. Ooh, Wyatt Quail got a little loose into that corner. Kyle Matthews might be able to get him here off this turn. Not quite. There is grip down there from corner entry into the center, but then from center off, that outside line just kicks back in. And Kyle Matthews, see right there, just lost a lot of momentum. Now winds it up. It's going to try again. Trey Wright pulling away. Well, as soon as I say that, Wyatt Quill got a good run off that corner, and he closes back up to the bumper of Trey Wright. Jay Jefferson back there. He's a lap car. Ryan Brommer has been able to get by Adam Garcia, though, and if he can get by Jay Jefferson, he might be able to get up here and battle with the top three. Teammate Zach Rogers sat on the pole for this race and he faded back very quickly after he was kicked up to the high side three wide. And that checks up a little bit there. Wyatt Quayle again gets a good run off turn four. So apparently that damage is not affecting him in any way, shape, or form. Here he comes. Whoa! I think that was a save and a half, don't you? Thought about going to the inside of Trey Wright, decided to come back behind him, and he nearly wrecked himself in the process. Oh, and Kyle Matthews does the same thing. Is there oil laid down right there? Is that why those drivers are sliding around in that particular area of the track? Dylan Poteet. Trying to see if lap traffic could come into play if, fingers crossed, we're able to go into a green flag run. Pochi crosses the line now. Leaders are hitting the strike now. Oh, wow. So they are closing in on that 31. They've got a little more than a corner to go before they catch him. Speaking of catch, Ryan Brawler is slowly reeling in the top three. And you got Julius Anderson right now in a battle with Jordan Lopez. That is for fifth. It's going on over seven seconds back. Jesse Turner. Right now is in 7th, Haas in 8th, ninth. Benny Watson. Right now Trent Dunham completes your top 10. Good battling going on from 6th on back. Well, from 5th on back, rather. 
OT there on the back straightaway. Leaders on the back straightaway now. And here comes, whoa, Wyatt Quail. He gets to the inside. Kyle Matthews thought about three wide. Ooh, could this work? Oh, I thought Wyatt Quail was going to get him. He had to check up in the center of the corner. Here's what the interesting thing is about that traffic that could come into play as well as Kyle Matthews that makes a move for second is we've seen that that outside line is the line to pass. Oh my goodness, look at Wyatt Quayle. Look at Wyatt Quayle. Around the outside, he'll go to the lead. Kyle Matthews stuck him on the outside line. He says, all right, you're gonna put me up there. I'm gonna go to the outside of the race leader. And Wyatt Quayle will go to the point. Trey right now under fire from Kyle Matthews for second. And Matthews is gonna get the spot. Here comes Ryan Brommer. Drivers now realizing that outside line is the way to go, and boy, I, th I think Kyle Matthews was trying to box in Wyatt Quayle, and it didn't work. Wyatt Quayle said, all right, I'm on the top side. Might as well try and get the run up the corner and get alongside the 28, and that's exactly what he did. So Trey Wright, who spent a good portion of this race out in front, now he's back to third. We've got traffic up ahead for Wyatt Quayle to deal with. Dylan Pote, Jessica Shelton, Levi McIntyre. Shelton and McIntyre had good runs last week at Phoenix. Shelton with the win. McIntyre finished in the top 10. Both of them struggling here today at Bristol. Here we go. Let's see how this traffic comes into play as Wyatt Quayle will try and go to the inside of Dylan Poteet. Kyle Matthews tries to follow him. Quayle will clear. Matthews not quite clear. Trey right now with a rear deck lift full of Ryan Brommer as... Kyle Matthews hounding Wyatt Quayle. Look at Levi McIntyre throwing a block on the 41. Matthews gonna try and go around the outside. Three wide off of turn four. This is for the lead between the 09 and the 41 and Matthews is gonna box in Wyatt Quayle on the bottom. Kyle Matthews goes to the lead. Oh, contact with Carson Gum. Oh, they're bleeding on each other back here. There was contact between Trey Wright and Levi McIntyre. And Matthews, oh my goodness, what is he doing? He can't side draft here, it's Bristol. Right down on the right rear quarter panel of Kyle Matthews, or I'm sorry, of uh, Cole Baker. And now Wyatt Quayle, Trey Wright, Ryan Brommer, they're all boxed in right now. They gotta find a way around because Kyle Matthews, he's putting on some daylight between himself and second place. Now trying to pass the 88 of William Brock. He's trying to do it on the inside line. That's not gonna work. Got to get himself back up to the top side. The 24 and the 88 are damaged. So that's going to slow up Kyle Matthews' laps times a little bit as he's boxed in. Oh, look out! Right ahead of him! Oh, there's a wreck! There's a wreck! That's Batson and Friesen! Matthews did get a piece of it. Caution will fly. And that's going to make a very interesting restart. Matthews has damage now on the rear end of his car. Zach Rogers wrecked out of turn four. Cole Baker, a lot of damage on his car. Carter Friesen as well. Matthews is the leader. He's waiting for the pace car to pick him up, but he does have damage, both on the right front and the rear of his Chevrolet. Ryan Brommer, I think, has got some damage. Shelton's got damage. Keith Batson is smoking. Trey Wright, looks like he might be okay. Jordan Lopez moved up to fourth. I think he's all right. Wyatt Quayle fell back to fifth. We're waiting for the pace car to catch up to the race leader, which is Kyle Matthews, and it's taking him a little bit of time. So while we wait for that to happen, let's go back and see what happened. Closing stages of this race and a caution right in front of the leaders here at Bristol. We had two wrecks at the same time in the same corner. First one starts here with Carter Friesen, the 37, James Shelley, the 71. Looks like Friesen came up a little bit. Shelley drove it down in deep. The two of them going to make contact. And then behind them, same deal between Keith Batson and Michael Norman. Carter Friesen's car immediately erupts in smoke. So too does Keith Batson's. And then watch here, coming into view... There's the bright 
Yellow and black, mellow yellow Chevrolet of Kyle Matthews. There you see the contact with the right front. Baker runs into the back of him. Shelton's into the back of Baker. Watch further back there. Carson Gum gets spun off the nose of Levi McIntyre. It looks like Brommer and Trey Wright got on the brakes in time. So I think they were all good. And what happened to Zach Rogers up here? This is in turn two, coming out of turn two on the back straightaway. So let's fast forward over in three and four because he wrecked. Oh, Michael Norman. I don't know if his car just snapped loose or what, but then he comes right down into the right rear quarter panel of our pole sitter. Then he goes down and sideswipes William Brock as well. And that was again right in front of our race leader, Kyle Matthews. So that brings out the caution late, and we will get a restart with less than 10 to go. So it will be a single file restart. Question is, though, how much damage uh, did Kyle Matthews get, and is it going to affect him? Because he was the race leader and still is the race leader as we get ready to go back to green. Well, as you watch that replay, utter chaos has been taking place here under pacing. We've gotten the one to green signal. I don't even know where the pace car is at. Kyle has still scored the leader, but this is, uh, I don't know, this is really weird. Uh, this is a very strange scoring system that we've got here. But Cole Baker, Jessica Shelton, Keith Bats, and Carter Freeze, and they're out of the race now after what we just saw. Green flag's going to come out this time, and Kyle Matthews is the race leader. Green flag's coming out with seven laps to go. Matthews the leader. Brommer is second. Julius Anderson was scored in third. I don't know what happened to Trey right now. Brommer's having to come to pit road. I am very confused. I'm not going to question it, though. Kyle Matthews is the leader. Trey Wright is uh, 14th they've got him scored. I think he's a lap down, as is Jordan Lopez. I don't know what the scoring error is. Who is the second-place car? They're saying it's Julius Anderson now. Jesse Turner in third. Benny Watson in fourth. Benjamin Miles fifth. And Seth Cole, Matt Haas, Diego Yepes, Jack Mitchell, and Charles Sanford in top ten. Like I said, it was all calamity here on those pace laps, and I think they've got some scoring errors, but I don't know. It is what it is. It's a battle here for position for 13th between Trey Wright and Jordan Lopez. Give it to Lopez. Actually, that was a battle for 12th. Ryan Acosta right now in 11th, and he is first car a lap down. As you can see right there, we've only got 10 cars in the lead lap. Kyle Matthews continuing to show the way. Damaged car and all. Looks like he is running away with this thing as the next car to battle him, Julius Anderson, has got all that traffic ahead of him. And he's over five seconds back. Kyle Matthews just hoping this race ends under green. Well, I was hoping we were going to have a Bristol race where it wasn't going to be utter calamity. It was a good green flag run there at that one point between... Uh, Trey Wright, Wyatt Quayle, and Kyle Matthews, as well as Ryan Brommer for the race lead. That at least was good, but other than that, it has been typical Bristol. It's been a wreck fest. We've got strange scoring errors. And I don't know. This is going to be one I'm probably just going to put in the back of my mind and pretend never happened. But Kyle Matthews won't. He saw the white flag. He's getting ready to give Retro Racing Enterprises their second win of the season. First of the season for him and jump up from 23rd in the point standings up to a more substantial substantial spot as coming out of turn four Kyle Matthews is going to win the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway and Bristol for some reason always seems to cater to drivers that are struggling as well and I see a number of drivers that were struggling in the point stands that came away with good finishes today. Matthews with the win, Miles in second, Seth Cole in sixth, Jack Mitchell in eighth. So we'll see how it shapes up the point standings, but it was Bristol, plain and simple. Kyle Matthews, back-to-back -back wins for Retro Racing Enterprises. He takes the win. Miles was second. Jesse Turner continues his consistent runs. He had a good run going last week at Phoenix. Of course, he took the checkered flag the week before at Atlanta. Came in 20 points behind Jordan Lopez in this race. Lopez finished in 11th, so Turner gained at least eight, sp eight points on him. So I think Lopez still will keep the points lead, but Turner continues to close in on him. Julius Anderson brings it home with a solid outing of fourth. And I think Anderson had a good run last week at Phoenix, so back-to-back good runs for him. How about Benny Watson there in fifth? He's been picking it up as of late as well. Had a good run last week. Seth Cole's going to bring it home in sixth. Diego Yepes, after a good run last week, 
uh, at Phoenix. He's going to finish in 7th. Jack Mitchell brings it home 8th. Matt Haas will finish in ninth, And Charles Sanford is going to complete the top 10. So Sanford, who I think this might be his third top 10 in the last four races. His consistency is definitely picking up as well. And now he is the lone Retro Racing Enterprises car that's yet to go to victory lane this season. Everybody else finished off the lead lap due to that weird scoring error that took place on that last caution. Jordan Lopez will finish in 11th, but that'll keep him the points lead. Ryan Acosta was 12th. Trey Wright, who dominated the early portion of the race, he'll finish 13th. Wyatt Quail 14th. Pulsitter Zach Rogers 15th. Look at Jay Jefferson. Spent a good portion of the race off the lead lap. He's going to still finish in the 16th position. Jose Mills was 17th, LaPlante in 18th, Trent Dunham 19th, and 20th was Adam Garcia. As you look on down through the rest of the finishing results, and I have no explanation for the scoring error. It was just really weird, and it was typical Bristol. Drivers that finished out of the race, eight of them in total, Cole Baker, last week's winner Jessica Shelton, our Daytona 500 winner Carter Friesen, Keith Batts and Matt McIntyre, Chris Dalton, Mitchell Collins, and Johnny Gardner. So that's going to do it here today from Bristol Motor Speedway. Like I said, a track or a race that I will probably try and forget even took place. Except for that one green flag run that we had, that was at least some really good racing. But aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed this race. If you did, you're crazy. If you didn't, then you're with me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, if you did enjoy the race, though, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to Kapara the Crew today. We have shown you full page results, and these are your points days heading next week. Hopefully, we're going to be having a little bit more normal racing as we'll be going to our first dirt track of the season, the Springfield Mile. That should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of slipping and sliding, and hopefully some good racing there. But until next week, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching a production of the Answer A, offline racing at its best. Oh, 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 oh,